Okay, hi, my name is Logan. Uh, I understand you guys are talking about um, solar power and wind power. Uh, I like both of those things. So I wanted to show you what I have here, a practical use for solar power. Um, up here, I have two solar panels that um, on, the bas on the basketball goal. Uh, and then I have one down here. I've got this one. And um, so what those are doing is I have them all fed in to... Show them the cord. Huh? Show them how you're feeding them in. So all three have cords. And then those are coming down and they're going into the bar into the to the wall right here <clears throat> so they are all coming through here and connecting through through all these wires and then i have um, this little gadget right here that hooks all three of the panels together so all the power comes out in one single plug right here okay so this runs through and comes to the back here um, this device is called a charge controller and what it does is it keeps the batteries from being overcharged because a battery like this can only hold so much power if you don't have one of these uh, the solar panels will continue to charge this and it will eventually explode. So this keeps this fully charged. On the front of this charge controller, um, this shows how many volts are in the battery. Um, I'm trying to revive this battery right now, so that's why it's only 8 volts. Uh, a normal battery, a good battery, will have uh, upwards of 14 volts. Uh, that's how you know that it is fully charged. Um, I can turn this on and off. Uh, either way, it still charges the battery and it controls how much current is in here. Uh, these are two 12-volt uh, outlets um, that you can plug car stuff in, like fans or whatever. What I use them for is... See, it has an SUV, so can they charge their phone? Oh, yeah. It also has a USB port so that you can charge uh, your phone or whatever through it. I use that sometimes when I'm out here working. I'll charge my phone, you know, stuff like that. Um, these down here are plugs for... Uh, this kit came with solar lights. Um, and you just plug them in. When you turn it on, the lights come on. Um, I can't see what those are. So this is 3B and 6B. Okay, yeah, so these are just different um, outlets for different types of power things, which I don't use these at all. I use this and this. So what I use this for is uh, to keep batteries charged uh, on my ATV and lawnmower. What you do is this is called an inverter. Uh, it changes the 12 volt power source into a wall outlet. So this is pretty simple. You can need these for your car. Um, I just plug it in that way and has a light tells me that it's on. And then you can plug in. Okay. You can plug in um, something that you would plug into a wall outlet or USB type devices. This again, this is called an inverter. And what does it do? Like, what? Why is that necessary? And not plug it in directly to, let's say, here. If you want to use this. Um, if you want to use this f to to power anything that has oh that's okay that's in case if you don't have an, an actual outlet right okay I see. yeah so if you don't have this kind of an outlet somewhere near you what this does is it takes what's in the battery transfers it and makes it into 120 volts so okay. that you can use it for uh, stuff that you would plug into the wall okay all right uh, or you can use 12 volt things that just plug in here mm -hmm. just regular battery things um, so I use it to keep my ATV and the 
lawnmower battery charge during the winter time. Now, the ratings for solar power panels uh, vary. So these up here I got at Harbor Freight. They're part of a kit called the Thunderbolt kit. Uh, there's usually three that come in a kit. It comes with a frame and everything, and it's about, I think it's about $200 for the whole thing. Um, it comes with the panels and the charge controller. Uh, with any solar, solar or wind power, you have to have a charge controller um, unless it is fed directly into the electrical system of your house or something of that nature. Now, these panels, those three panels that I just showed you, um, they're kind of old panels, so you have to worry about, we don't have to worry about it, you need to know the efficiency rating of the panels. So these up here, so for 100% a, a of the power that they collect, they will only transfer about 50 to 20% of that, that juice down to the battery. Um, okay. okay. So this one, this one here, is a, is a brand new solar panel that I got. Um, it's by Goal Zero, which is my favorite company to buy solar power products. And they are from. not sponsoring you. And they are not sponsoring me. I wish they did. Okay, so this one is. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, um, if you can look at that panel over there. And look okay. at the glass. Why don't you come over here and we'll figure it out. Okay. So if you look at this type of material, okay, this is the old type of material. Um, it has the lines going up and down. That's how you know it's old. Mm -hmm. And it's just glass. So it's only about 20% efficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one, if you can see it, um, it's, it's a different type of material. I think they call it like crystal alkaline or crystalline or something like that um, and its efficiency rating is more like 50 to 60 percent um, all of these come with uh, their connect connections so that you can plug it into a USB port this one connects to a battery pack that I have but they all come with that and uh, they all come with um, a battery because you have to have a battery of some sort to collect the energy that you are getting from the Sun what do you use what do you use this for like what is it good for and when would you use it okay so the battery pack that I have up at the house um, has a 150 amp hour battery so what that means is um, if a light uses one amp an hour, that battery will power it for 150 hours. So if you look on your cell phone um, or a like a double A battery, it will have something called a milliamp hour M um, capital A little H M A H uh, rating. Most of them are like 15,000, like 1,500 or 2,000 milliamp hours. Um, so the amount of power that you have, uh, I think, I think 1000, your teacher might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 1000 milliamp hours is one amp hour. I believe that's the way it works. Um, so if you were going to use this for, let's say your house, uh, anything like that, whenever you let's say you wanted to power TV so on the back of your TV there's a little sticker and it will tell you um, how many amp hours it uses it will tell you how many volts it needs to power the device um, the reason that I started getting into this was because we lived in Los Angeles and they have something called rolling blackouts which means that they will cut the power off to your house for so many hours a day to save energy. Um, so what I did is I, I started researching how solar power works. Um, I bought a solar, I made a, um, so I bought a panel and I made what's called a, um, 
a solar generator. All right. So when you make something like that, you have to have a solar panel, obviously. You have to have a battery, and you have to have um, an inverter so that you can power uh, like a TV, VCR, that type of thing. When, when you buy the battery, it has to be a deep cycle marine battery. Regular batteries are not uh, designed to be charged and discharged over and over and over. Whereas a marine battery, a deep cycle marine battery, they're designed to be 100% charged, 100% depleted uh, thousands of times and over their life. So it doesn't hurt them to do that. Uh, <clears throat> So the reason I did that is because of the rolling blackouts. So I, I put this together. I got a, uh, a toolbox on wheels, put the battery inside of it, mounted my solar panel, and we would uh, roll it outside, out in the sun, it would charge the battery. And then at night, whenever the rolling blackouts would, get, would come, um, I could power a TV VCR and maybe uh, a light. small fan yeah. or something like that uh, for about two or three maybe four hours depending on what we were doing um, so that that's the reason I got into it and then over you know it's been maybe ten years ago or so um, I've redesigned and designed different solar uh, generators and stuff like that can you explain a little bit of the science that goes into the solar into the battery I know you kind of explained it but like what like, does it have to be pointed a certain way? Can okay. you just stick it outside anywhere? So, whenever you position a solar panel, it has to be facing, the panels have to be facing south. Uh, because we live in North America, uh, the panels have to be facing to where the equator is because that is where the strongest sun rays are. Um, Some companies uh, can build solar panels that will rotate and follow the sun as it tracks across the sky, which increases their efficiency. Uh, science behind them. Um, okay, so how, how do they produce power? My understanding of this is that the sun causes the electrons if you if you know what that is you know protons electrons neutrons all that good stuff the electrons passing from a point a to a point b whenever they move along their course uh, that is what electricity is that's how current is generated is moving those electrons um, past a certain point so what happens is whenever the sun hits that material it causes the electrons to move which causes it to produce power. Uh, and that power will travel down through the line uh, to, the, to the charge controller and then to the battery. Okay. And I think that's it. So if you guys have any questions, not for me, ask your teacher. Uh, hopefully she can answer them. Uh, and this is a practical example of how you use solar power.